Section 10, wrapping up. You've worked with many of the Redis data structures and now you have an entire game at your disposal. In this section, we'll look at what you've learned so far and we'll talk a little bit about what you could do next. Video 10.1, what have you learned? In this video, we'll talk about what we've covered in this course and what you've learned about Redis. We'll review what Redis is and the ways we've used it and the data structures we've used to create our game. First of all, let's recall what Redis really is. It's an open source, in-memory, networked key value store. It's a simple definition, but it has several specific implications for its use. As a key value store, one expects that a primary access will be via keys, not queries. And as we've seen, Redis doesn't provide much of a query mechanism and has no support for secondary indexes. In addition, because data is in memory, we must ensure that we have enough memory on hand to hold our database. That said, it is networked and durable, which means that we can store the data itself on a local or remote disk and load it again as needed later. All in all, extremely useful for the right applications. We've also learned how to install, connect to, and manipulate Redis. We've covered installing the system from packages and source. We've covered connecting to Redis locally, remotely, and with and without password protection. And we've explored using the Redis command line interface. Finally, of course, we've extensively used Node.js to connect to and manipulate the Redis data structures to create a game. And finally, we've explored several Redis data structures. We've used Redis at its most basic as a simple key value system. We've also used a Redis list to store unordered data elements. We used the Redis set to store unordered, non-duplicate information and explored its capabilities to quickly combine sets using intersection, union, and difference. We've further explored the sorted set data structure as a way of imposing order onto a set based on a score that we gave the data elements and used it to create a leaderboard for our game. And finally, we looked at the pub-sub capabilities of Redis to see how one client of Redis can receive events raised by other clients. As you can see, we've covered quite a bit, but in the next video, we'll look at what we didn't do and where you might take things from here.